Hello and welcome to the Shortel Connects training. My name is Mike Shin. I'm the service manager here at CIO Solutions. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the Shortel Connect, how it differs from the old Shortel version, and what you can come to expect from it, and how to do some of the old familiar functions that you might be looking for. Uh, the good news is that a lot of Shortel Connect is the same as the old version. And uh, if you're used to using your Shortel phone, that uh, obviously is the hardware. It has not changed. You might be using a Shortel 230 or using a Shortel 480 or one of the other many phones that Shortel offers. They're all pretty fantastic phones as far as things go. Uh, but today we're going to focus primarily on what is different in Communicator. Uh, so let's go ahead and run Shortel Connect. Uh, you probably already have an icon either in your start menu or on your desktop. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and run that Shortel Connect and you're going to notice first of all that the look and feel has changed. It's no longer a menu that's at the top with a quick little toolbar. It's now its own standalone application and it wants to run that way. If you're used to grabbing onto it and docking it to the top it, it doesn't really want to do it in the same way. Instead, it'll dock, but anytime you open up a, a new document, um, we'll say Notepad, you can see it docks on top or underneath. And that's it's a little bit different. I, I don't like it at all. So I just run it as a regular application here. When I have it in use, it's up. When I don't have it in use, I minimize it. And I should also throw out here, it is no longer called uh, Shortel Communicator. It's now called the Shortel Connect application, as can be seen at the top here with the word connect. Uh, so now it's got a little bit of a different look and feel. You can see it's got these gray bars. It's got the, the orange, the familiar Shortel orange uh, as a highlight. Uh, here at the top, if you'd like to call somebody, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and put in a name or a phone number. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and place a call to one of my one of my coworkers here. And immediately you can see who's available, who's not available, much in the same way that your old Shortel communicator worked. Now Shortel Connect will show the person as available or unavailable here in in this screen. And if I'm going to call Whitney, for example, I can just double click on her name or press enter or press that green circle as before. Let's see if she's there. Hi, Whitney. You're, uh, you're as part of my training right now. Just, just uh, calling you up to make sure that we can make a call. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So we've just placed a call. Uh, now I'm going to forward your call. Uh, who who should I forward your call to? Um, I am not too sure. You can forward my call over to Michelle. How about Michelle? Okay. So in order to forward this call, I'm going to click on, you can see this menu just appears here. We're going to go ahead and click on the forward button, the transfer button, and we're going to call Michelle. And I just type in her name just like I would have with the communicator. I can see her extension. And I have my options. These are your sub options. Do I want to do a warm transfer with consult or a full transfer? Let's go ahead and do a warm transfer. Hello. Hi, Michelle. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing well. You're as part of my training right now, and I'm going to transfer Whitney over to you. Is that okay? Okay. Here you go. And as you can see, Whitney has been on hold now for a few seconds while I've called Michelle. We're going to go ahead and transfer her right now. And it's as simple as that. Calling somebody, placing a call, forwarding a call. Doing a conference call is much the same, except instead of hitting transfer, I would hit the conference button. This is a good time to talk about the availability states and what they mean. So let's say I'm going to be going on vacation for a little while. Uh, it's nice to be able to, in advance, record what my voicemail message is going to be while I'm on vacation. So I can pull this down and say I'm out of office and going to be out of office for the next couple of weeks. But I want a custom message for that. So let's go ahead and configure how we do that. I'm going to go to the connect at the top and go to settings. 
And once I see that, I'm going to go to Call Routing. And this should tell me my different availability states. My when is my call routing, so I'm going to change my out of office. And I'm going to see where my calls are going to be forwarded. In this case, my calls are forwarded to my cell phone. If I want to change that to a different phone number, I can edit it from there and adjust it to, to my voicemail, for example. I can make it ring once or twice before it rings to my voicemail. Uh, you, you have a lot of options when configuring these availability states. Now, I mentioned earlier that your Outlook contacts were synced with your, your Shortel, but let's say you have not yet set up your Outlook contacts to sync with Shortel. I can show you how to set that up right now. To do so, you're going to go to Connect, and go to Settings again, and this time we're going to go to Outlook, and you want to check the box that's right here, the second box, and that's going to sync up your Outlook contacts. That can take a little bit after you've checked the box and hit Save, but it will work for you. One of my favorite features in Shortel is forwarding your voicemails to emails. Uh, I find it to be much easier to check my voicemails from my phone, my cell phone, or my email than I do from my Shortel phone. Uh, in order to set that up, if you haven't had that set up previously, what you do is you go to Connect, and then go to Settings, and you think you'd go to Voicemail, you think you'd go to Outlook. No, instead I want you to go to Notifications. And in Notifications, you want to check that first box there. And this box is going to allow you to send an email notification to your email address and attach the voicemail as a WAV file. I also recommend having all three checkboxes here. So the third box, Mark Voicemail is Heard. And what that does is it allows your voicemail box not to fill up. So if you've ever had that happen before, this is going to prevent that from happening because it's going to delete them from your Shortel voicemail as it forwards to your uh, Outlook email. So let's explore a couple other items on Shortel Connect. Uh, one is going to be People. Now if you click on that People button, you're going to see Shortel Connect wants to keep expanding to the right. So if I click on People, and then I choose one of my, my favorite people here, Richard, you're going to see how it expands even further to the right. And this is going to allow you some other options. Like I can call Richard outright by clicking on the green circle, or I could double click on Richard to do the same thing. Many ways of doing the same type of thing. It's also going to show you all of the history of speaking with Richard in the past. Uh, you can add new people as your favorites by going ahead and typing their name in here and placing a star next to them as you see them. The next feature I want to show you is the recent history. Uh, this is sort of your call history if you used Shortel Call Manager before. I'm going to go ahead and click on there and you're going to see all the different calls that you've had. Uh, you can see the different times that people called. You can highlight just based on the number of calls that you've deleted or missed. And you can also uh, add this person as a contact if you haven't uh, if you don't have them in your Outlook yet. Thank you for watching. This is a brief introduction to the new Shortel Connect client. I hope that you learned something new. I hope it wasn't too long for you. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great day.